The Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast. I reckon... I've Do got you? A, I've got a what theorem. Do you reckon? I reckon we should get Clint to... Uh, no, not Clint. Sorry. Ch- far out. I always make that mistake. Chang. I was going to say Chang. I'm so sorry, Clint. I make it's that okay. mistake every time. It's okay. I don't mind. I was going to say that I... Uh, what a nice guy. I was going to say we should get um, Chang to rate the show today. Just as, a, just as an idea. Give, oh, yeah. give us a rating scale. Chang, whoa, whoa, whoa. Have proof? you just been listening to JJ, Mike and Dom or something? No, That's every... A, I get do it from, that every day. I got it from my favourite podcast, The Basketball Jones, does it? Okay. Chang's in a soundproof room at the moment, so you won't be able to hear him. Chang, can you hear us? He can. Chang, can you please give the show um, today a rating out of 10? Hold up no, your no, fingers. No, 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 no. At the end of the podcast, he's going to give it a rating. And oh. he's got to also come up with a rating system, like a way of rating the show as well. And it can't just be out of 10. That's like boring. How many dumplings out of 10 do you give the show? Well, that was a little bit of a racist one. I was thinking more like you can rate them by super rugby teams, for example. Like um, it was to be the Chiefs if it was an awesome show or the mm-hmm. Blues if it was a terrible show. Mm-hmm. Or just if, an example. Or if the show were a sweatshop, um, no. <laughs> how many cents an hour would you pay us <laughs> out of 10? <laughs> no, this is the podcast. Thank you for listening. Guy Sharon and Clint. What are the embarrassing things that you did to be cool? Call in 0800 The Edge or text into 3343. I said um, just before that I, back in the day, for about a, a week, I wore a shark tooth necklace when I came back from Fiji. Yeah. And uh, someone's texted in saying, okay, buddy, I still wear one every day anyway. <laughs> You'd still get a good shark tooth necklace at the markets in Nelson, wouldn't you? It's still it's still um, a hip thing in Nelson. I don't know why I even brought that <laughs> one up. Clint, I heard that you used to be a huge Limp Biscuit fan. Where the hell did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> you like that hot dog flavoured water? Oh, God. Did you have the baggy jeans? I had the baggy jeans. Did you have the uh, chain to your wallet in case someone stole your wallet? Even yeah. you got no money in your wallet whatsoever? Yeah, I had the chain to my Velcro How wallet. How cool is that chain, eh? I had a backwards um, flexi cap. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> if, flexi fit. If Fred Durst had it, I had it. <laughs> that wow. is awesome. Sharon, you're not getting out of this either. I heard you used to be a little bit emo. A little bit emo. What? A no, little bit is, emo. Okay, I went through the emo stage. I even had the black nail polish, and I would paint my middle finger fluorescent pink so that people could see my middle finger standing amazing, out. Amazing, It was pretty amazing. amazing. Black hair, black eyeliner. Everything I wore was either black or pink. A lot of dark eyeliner. I remember working mm. with you then. They're not to- even talking that long ago. No, this is, this <laughs> is about was seven last years week. ago. At least I was a child during the Limp Bizkit thing. <laughs> Shut up. Not much has changed, mate. But Mel's on the phone. Mel, what is your most embarrassing way that you've tried to be cool? Um, so this is the not early 90s. Uh, fluoro pink bike pants, you know, the light <laughs> shirt. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. had to be fluoro pink. It, I was a social outcast if I didn't have them. Yeah. And those ridiculous multi-fluoro elastic waisted skirts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, the thing yeah. is, they were amazing, and they you're right, they were good <laughs> in the early 90s, and then they came back about five years <laughs> ago. Back, it's just a back again. And I said to my kids, I told you I was cool once. <laughs> <laughs> just this one time. Thank you so much, Mel. I- I'm glad that we're not alone. We're not the only ones that embarrassingly tried to be cool. No cool person has ever said, I told you I was cool once. There's no cool way of saying that, is there? No. <laughs> I think the only thing worse than my emo stage was when all my hair was brown and I got a blonde fringe. That's pretty cool. Oh, that yeah. is, that, that's a power fridge I right just, there. I just wanted streaks. It's mince and cheese. <laughs> Shut like up. A little bit of cheese. You can't talk. <laughs> I've seen your mince and cheese lifestyle. <laughs> Someone texts in saying when burning smiley faces into your skin with a hot lighter here oh, was a yes. cause. Oh, was yeah. that a thing? Yeah. 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 They're saying they still have a scar nine years later. Yeah. I know so many people that used to do that. What did you, what it's trend, a shocker. what crappy trend now that you look you back it at now? it, did you jump on to try and be cool? What have you done in the past which is so not cool <laughs> to try and be cool? Mel, confess your sins. Um, I thought I was really cool by wearing the Henson t-shirt. Yeah. Because oh. I loved Hanson. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. That is cool. Was quite cool. Let's go. Oh, you've got the Hanson t-shirt. Who was the hottest one? Um... Taylor. I think I used to like the middle one, yeah. yeah. Taylor. Of course it was Taylor. Stupid question. All Every, right. Everyone likes Taylor. Thank On you the so next much, one. Mel. I'd really like a handsome t-shirt these days, by the way. It would be cool. It would be a good callback. Mm. Just to be ironic. Mm. Jesse, what is your embarrassing thing you did to be cool? I got... Oh, oh she's hang gone on, mate. Very far hang away on, from us. hang on. You've, you've we'll covered your mouthpiece up, mate. Hang we'll on. Back to her. Tony, what did you try to do to be cool? 
Um, I dyed the front of my hair red because Michael Murphy off Indian Idol had it, and I was obsessed with him. I, I honestly didn't think we were going to get worse than Hanson, and then you had to drop in a Michael Murphy red streak. No, but people... I look at the photos and cringe now. So many people used to do that. You would have been one way or the other. You would have been doing a Michael Murphy red streak, or you would have been doing a Ben Lummis pattern shaved into your yes. head. Yes, <laughs> that is amazing, Tony. Good on you, mate. And Nikki, what was yours? Uh, mine was pants with a skirt over the top. The best part about this trend, Nikki, correct me if I'm wrong, is that people used to wear kind of flared pants underneath as well, not <laughs> yeah. just skin tight pants. Look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I That's fe- how it came. I feel so like, good. I feel like for every one of these trends we, um, uh, we say out loud on air, there's people on the street right now wearing some, a skirt thing. over some pants and going, oh, unreal sad. <laughs> I used to do this skirt over pants thing because like, we used we to call them bootlegs. We're like, yeah, I got my black bootlegs. F- and I used to wear a little Asian skirt that my friend Laura had given me over the top of them. Oh, my God. It was, awesome. it was quite a conservative look because obviously it was a skirt, but you didn't have to wear any, show any legs. I felt like it was part of the girl power, like feminist... Oh, period. I would welcome back the skirt over pants thing if it means yeah. I don't have to look at someone's bum hanging yeah, out their shorts yeah, yeah, in the yeah. winter any day. I, like honestly, I, I know you're shaking here, but when I'm seeing kids that are like just starting high school wearing those yeah, shorts, oh, I'm like, where are the skirt over pants? There's some great ones coming Thanks, through the text Mom. machine that I Shut remember up. so fondly. And this is a weird one. I remember putting the tops of lighters on the peak of my cap. I did that. That was a sh- I reckon we're going to get an I did that from Clint from all of these. Next one, I got an undercut, undercut in the 90s. It was so rad. I did that. <laughs> I used to bleach my hair because I was hardcore into Eminem. Oh, I did that. That is a shocker. Um, wearing a plaster on your face like Nelly. Surely not this one. I did that. A sticking plaster on your face. Because I had an eyebrow piercing that I wasn't allowed to wear to work, (laughs) so I used to wear a plaster over my eyebrow. Oh, my God. Here's a final one. This was an absolute classic that took the world by storm, weirdly. Skater belts that hang down in between your legs yep. like it's an like it's a, a schlong. I did that. Yeah, I, I did that. The Unbelievable. Lo- the longer you skate about, the hi- bigger your hypothetical penis. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost That's so much true. respect for you. Guy Sharon and Clint. Itch. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the studio, direct from the bathroom, the wonderful <laughs> Tiny Temple! <laughs> Direct from the bathroom. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love that. Wow, the tune's coming in. How are you guys doing? You're right. Yeah, we're good. We had to twist your arm to get you in here, but we're glad <laughs> you, you, guys, you managed to pop in. Everyone that's listening, I was literally in the bathroom. I just finished, and then and then this happened, and now Actually, I'm here. We've got to we've got to uh, give a shout out right now to uh, the girls, Steph from the night show, and Megan from the Edge Workday. Awesome. They lured me in here. They both scooped their boobs to get good cleavage, and then they're like, Tony, come in, come in, come in, and then he came in. And sure enough, I fell for it. I'm right. I'm right here. No, how are you guys doing? Yeah, We're good. 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 Thanks for having me on. No, well, thank you for coming. Welcome to New Zealand, by the way. Good. I'm loving it, man. Best sure. place ever. Yeah, you got the t-shirt on. It must be a lot warmer than where you've just come from. Perhaps. Yes, it is indeed. It yeah. is indeed. Yeah, man. I'm. I'm really happy. Everyone's great. I'm happy that you guys were playing Param- Paramore. Have you started playing um, Ain't It Fun, the new one? Yeah. No, we've been there and done that on that track, mate. We're okay, on. Cool. We're on to the next oh, one. Okay, you guys are on to the next one. Yeah, yeah. That track New Zealand is the no, future. Yeah, you guys have got you know Breaking Bad star on here as well. <laughs> newspaper. Yeah, I love it. I love it. This well, is fun. You're in New Zealand, for people that might not know, is that you're going to be opening for Macklemore and Ryan Lewis tonight. You did in a Welling- few hours. You did Wellington last night. How was the Wellington crowd? Do you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. Wellington was one of the most uh, loudest and craziest crowds I've had in a long time. Yeah? Really? So there is pressure tonight for Auckland. Are you, are you being honest with us, though? I am being honest. I'm in <laughs> Auckland right now. Yeah. Do, you, do you understand what kind of potential trouble this could get me in? <laughs> as soon as I leave this station, like, that's how on- honest I'm being. But honestly, I have high expectations for Auckland. Yeah. Everyone talks to me about how amazing everyone is, how energetic the crowd is as well. I can't wait. Tony, we were just discussing embarrassing um, fashion trends that you used to be do back in the day that yeah. you now look back on and regret. Is there anything that you used to do? There's two things. Um, I won, One time my mum from America got me like an um, all-cream velour tracksuit. <laughs> yeah. And velour tracksuits are for girls. You should never really, really wear that. Like so, a mobster. Yeah, like a mobster. So I was wearing one of those. And then I, I had one of the um, a Visu jeans with like all the pockets on it on the oh. front. The super oh, awesome. Baggy. Hang on. Yeah. Were, you one, those, in. were yeah. you one of those people that actually put things in their cargo pockets? <laughs> no, no, I didn't. <laughs> Did you ever wear more than one wristwatch at a time? No, 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 no. no. Sometimes in my house I do. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> what, did you, what did you get up to last night? Because I saw around about four o'clock this morning, Macklemore posted an Instagram video doing a rap while weeing. Wow, and okay. And we all got to see his, 
wee in the toilet and he rapped about going to the bathroom. What were you doing at 4 a.m. Wow, this morning? What was I doing at 4 a.m. this morning? I was in a I was in a club somewhere. <laughs> I was like, you know, I wish I w- I wish I could have gone out tonight, but we are literally getting on the plane straight after the show. Oh, oh really? Oh. Yeah, straight after the show. So it's it's a shame. I don't get to see Auckland nightlife, but you've just next ruined time. the marketing plan of about ten bars in Auckland who all said <laughs> I'm definitely gonna be here after the show. I know, Tony I know, Tempest thank God for down. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, well, um, we're looking forward to seeing you tonight. We're all coming down to Victor oh, to see perfect. the show. Perfect, yes. So yeah. now I'll see you guys. Thank you so much for stopping. Always, in. man. Ladies and gentlemen, Tiny Tempo! Yay! I love the energy in here, man. I'll see you guys later on. All right, cheers, cheers man. Guy, okay. Sharon, and Clint. On the edge. Now, if you'd remember, Clint gave the option we're either, either going to have um, Travel Guy <laughs> or Tiny Temper. We got Tiny Temper. Here's a bonus. We're getting Travel Guy too. Oh, yeah. Not, <laughs> not loved by the person who texts in saying, yes, no Travel Guy this week. <laughs> Sucked in. It's happening anyway. <laughs> and by the way, if you want um, Travel Guy to come to your town, then um, text in to 3343 and let me know where I should go next. Yeah. This m- a magical adventure. This week, I'm very close to Auckland. I'm in the beautiful Huntley. Huntley. Someone's booing me on the text machine. <laughs> Don't boo me. Screw you. I went to Huntley. This was hard. I, this was Guy, not easy to prepare. Guy, we've told you not to read the text machine because nobody likes you on there. <laughs> so just don't read it. You're not even supposed to have the password Stop anymore. Stop booing me. All right, let's go to Huntley. Hi. I'm Guy Williams. My dad says that I'm related to Venus and Serena Williams, but I'm sceptical. Robbie Williams is your cousin. Shh. Welcome to Guy the Travel Guy's Guide to Travel. Today we're in the beautiful... Today we're in Huntley. Up until today, Huntley was known mainly for having a road that goes through it, but what else does this place have to offer? Huntley is a small mining town, 40 minutes drive up State Highway 1 from Hamilton, or 30 minutes drive if you're not a pussy. Huntley was founded in 1983 when local businessmen came up with the genius plan of erecting a Decker sign in the city despite not having a Decker. The legendary sign continues to draw tourists and fans alike, despite Decker going bankrupt in 2002. Huntley is New Zealand's largest producer of coal, producing 10,000 tonnes of coal per day. That's more than 9,000 tonnes. Other features of Huntley include one of New Zealand's largest power stations and the birthplace of New Zealand's top twins, the Top Twins. Also, Huntley Surf, Skate and Snow Shop is New Zealand's first and only 24-hour surf, skate and snow shop. And of course, who could forget the famous Vogel's Bread Factory? Unfortunately, the people of Huntley have nothing to spread on the Vogel's Bread since the sanitarium peanut butter factory closed down in 2003. I'm here with the owner of Huntley's 24-hour surf, skate and snow shop, Chad. Chad, what do you say to those people suggesting that it's crazy to open a 24-hour surf, skate and snow shop, especially one so far away from waves, ski fields or skate parks? It's a pee lab, bro. Awesome. That's all for Guy's Travel Guy Guide this week. I'll see you next week when I'm going to grey mouth, assuming that I don't get stabbed right now. <laughs> That's Huntley. Thank you, Travel Guy. I just, oh, I'm sorry. I keep not doing your microphone on. I just cannot <laughs> figure out that Huntley store that's open 24 hours and is a surf sk- snake, skate snow shot. It fascinates me endlessly. One of the maybe, many jewels in this beautiful country of New Zealand, Aotearoa. Maybe it's like um, when you go to Chinatown in New York or something and um, you go in and there's a guy sitting next to a certain part of the store with a walkie-talkie and it's a secret room of illegal things you can buy in there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, it's right. like that, but it's just a P-Lab and there's no secret room. <laughs> <laughs> Travel Guy will be back next Thursday to go somewhere different around this wonderful country we call oh, Aotearoa. I know what it is. What? It's a top twin secret show. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we Guy, there? Sharon and Clint. Itch. Guy, Come Sharon on. and Clint. Dragon stand. <laughs> Roar, I am a dragon. Welcome to my den. <laughs> We, um, we're having business ideas at the moment. We've had a few cracker ones uh, come through already. Someone said laser on lipstick. Actually, that's not that good an idea, eh? Laser on. La- 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 laser lipstick. You can get tattooed lipstick. Yeah, like tattooed lipstick. Yeah, so it's there for I think it means like laser precision so I can see the outline of your lips. A crumb catcher mm. attachment for a vacuum so you can eat toast in bed without getting crumbs on your sheets. That's genius. That is genius. That's really good. I would actually do that because I love toast and I love being in bed. <laughs> energy chewing gum is another one, another good one. So many good ideas. Yeah, all there's right. already an energy che- chewing gum if you if you are interested in getting it. Yeah, I'm sure that exists. And those energy lollipops that were real big as well, e pops. Yep. Okay, on the phones. Welcome to the Dragon's Den, Emily. What is your idea? My idea is to have a one-ended um, top sheet that was this is 
so that ah. you're not ending up pulling that up all around your face mm. and it just stays on the bed. Mm. That'll be so good and be so easy to make your bed as well. I know, exactly. Emily, you're an absolute genius. Good Dragon's Den edition. Yeah, I like that. Kaz, what's your idea for the Dragon's Den? Um, a mobile liquor delivery service. Yes! Now, b- before, before <laughs> we really say good idea. obvious reasons, why do you want that to exist? What's your reasoning? Uh, stop drink driving? Yeah, okay, that's what I thought it was. I that's what we thought just... too, because you're at the party, <laughs> you need more, no one has to figure out who has to go, booyah. Excellent exactly. idea, Kaz. That is very well thought out. Wonder, Somebody pick that up. I wonder if there's a legal reason why that doesn't exist, because that's a good idea. Yeah, it must be a licensing thing. Plus, I'm very lazy, and I'd love to be able to it dial would, a it, beer. It would, solve the, no, yeah, it would solve so many problems in New Zealand, I yep. think. They yep. do delivery. And create a, a lot more problems as well. <laughs> <laughs> they do delivery for like, businesses and stuff, but they don't do it like on the night like pizza. Glenn, What's your idea? Uh, dog bed, ergonomically designed. What, what does that mean? Uh, what does that mean? It means a place the dog can sleep. I'm sure, no, that, no, I'm sure those so already you, exist. So you want it to adjust to the heat of the dog, is that what you're saying? They do that naturally. Like, wow. The first one I made was probably about 13 years ago while I was living in Australia. Okay. Oh, so um, this is a bloody plug, I see, I see what you're doing hey, here. No. <laughs> Just no. Tell you, if I wasn't so busy, I would actually do them myself. Well, I'd love one for my dog. Can you send me a free one? Absolutely. Do we yes. have do we have a do we have a good name for them? Yeah, I was going to call them dog e beds, like e for environmentally friendly. That was one way I was going to make them dog e beds. Um, but really, um, hey, you know, if someone wants to take it on, I'm I'm cool to for them to be. Named I reckon Sharon either. should like be the spokesperson for them, dog e beds, and it should dog be the Shares e-beds. dogs, dog e beds. Yeah, That's this is going to take off. All Look right. out! Great idea, Glenn. We're getting a lot of great ideas. We're also getting a lot of terrible ideas as well. Text Machine has had some. One is um, homemade fleshlight, oh. and the other oh one God. is a floating mirror. Oh, so it just hovers in These are shocking ideas. I want to hear your terrible ideas. I want to hear your great ideas. Guys, Sharon and Clint, Dragon's Den. Some good ideas, some really good ideas, and some absolute shockers. Here's some of the worst ones. Um, someone's come up with um, transparent toilet paper. Why would that ever be a good idea? Yeah, you never see where the clean side is. Um, plane finder? That, oh, that's way too soon. Oh. Someone's saying invent something that stops Guy from being a dick. That would be quite a handy invention. <laughs> there are scientists I'm not a dick, I'm a nice person. You're a nice person 98% of the time. Sometimes you're a real dick, just like all of us. <laughs> Maybe just I need like some the person dr- that just texted in. That probably exists. Maybe drugs or something like that. Let's get some good ideas on the phone. Welcome into our den, Israel. Raw. What is your idea? Uh, my idea is a device called a your legometer. I was thinking that, you know, if you're not sure if a guy or a girl is out of your league, to have something that, you know, <laughs> would tell you mm-hmm. so you don't embarrass yourself. Mm-hmm. That's true. No one would be out of your league, though, Israel. It's all about how confident you are. Well, no, the, <laughs> ideally, the your legometer would take that into account, wouldn't it? It wouldn't just be aesthetic. It would go, okay, yeah, what no, are your credentials? Yeah. So I, I feel like this could be a good, like, um, like application where you upload your pictures and it could be, like, crowdsourced and people could say, like, yeah, they're in your league now, and you get a percentage rating. So what you're saying is like Tinder? Uh, nah, more like hot or not, but for like oh, a couple. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you could even have it with uh, Israel, have like an extra attachment which tells you if somebody's single or taken or gay or straight. Like a Facebook status. Yeah, endless possibilities. <laughs> endless possibilities, Israel. Thank you so much for your idea. Bridget, what is your idea for Dragon's Den? I'm thinking of like a woman's Swiss Army knife Ooh. and have um, lipstick and mascara oh. and, and eyeliner and things like that. Oh, and, yes. Um, yeah, a handbag size. And then you could have a nail file and a wee fan, that, um, a mirror that fans out or something, and then you can tuck that back in there. And nail you polish remover then? Oh, absolutely. But you'd have to be able to get refills for them. Yes, that that is on the money, Bridget. You need to quit your yeah. job and just go and make one of those. A Swiss lady knife. <laughs> it would, a Swiss yeah. lady knife. Yeah. That is good. That would be the one. All Thanks, right. Bridget. Luke, what is your idea for the Dragon's Den? My idea is a, uh, a wheelchair with the wheels that, like, they sort of break down so you can actually make, they can make themselves upstairs. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm with you. Are I- you in a wheelchair, Luke? No, not at all. No, I'm just, uh, I know a few people that like to invent stuff, so I tried years ago to create something, but uh, due to lack of knowledge on the situation, I just sort of left it. Mm. You tried to make your own wheelchair, but you know nothing about it. <laughs> no, I no, no, I tried. What was it made out of? What was it made out of? 
No, no, I didn't actually physically create anything. I just oh. sort of drew up a few ideas. Make but, a uh, prototype and then test it out. It was bound is, to go wrong. What a nice invention, <laughs> though, Luke. That is a really nice thought that you even tried. Most people wouldn't even think about something like that. So good on yeah, you. Yeah, my mum tells me I'm a lovely young man, so I try my best. You really are, babs. I'm so... <laughs> I'm so proud of New Zealand and all their ideas today because there's been so many good ones. Here's some great ones from the text machine. A chili bin with a padded seat built into the lid with a fold-up back. Great oh, idea. Yeah. That should be a product already. The sugar shield, a mouth guard that you wear while you're drinking soft drink to protect against teeth, tooth decay. Oh, yeah. I feel like that would be difficult, but if it could ex- be executed po- p- properly, it could be a million-dollar idea. And finally, this one's a bit off the wall, but um, hear me out. My idea, an add-on for breast implants, already going a bit weird. Option to add in flavoured nipples. I was strawberry. As soon as you said that, I was like, flavoured nipples, I bet you. <laughs> Cola, bacon. <laughs> bacon flavoured nipples. And it's not a bad idea. Is it's this, not, it's worth considering. Is this your idea? Well, no, it's not my idea. It's from the text machine, which was blowing up earlier. This is the bit where we close the dragon's den. Just Thank go you get for, some body paint. Thanks for all your ideas. Guy Sharon and Clint. On the bloody edge. Could Chang Hung please report to the uh, <laughs> studio? Uh, it's time for the segment. Um, weekend Wicked Weather Watch or whatever Shaz Dog was calling it before. <laughs> Wild weather. Watch. Okay. Watch, watch, watch. <laughs> I like that effect. So apparently there's a it's tropical whispering. cyclone coming and we've all been going round for the last... People ask what we do between the breaks and in the hands. Yeah. I've been we've unfollowing been, people on Twitter. We've all been talking about who's actually going to do this thing, which we've teased quite a lot, the weekend weather watch. No one wants to do it. No one wants to take hey. responsibility. I know nothing about this. Hey. Like it's called Lucy. You just calm the hell down. <laughs> Chang is why are you so while, angry? While I've been going through on an unfollow mission on Twitter, I've been making up the jingle for that, which was... Wild, wild, weather, wild. You have heard wild, that. Wild. It was terrible. Yeah, it was better than what you brought to the table. <laughs> so there's some weather forecast for this weekend, and this is a very um, arrogant city boy thing to say, but I don't care because I live inside. So, <laughs> well, I do, but it affects a lot what of people. What if it affects your house, you diddle? Yeah, I know. What if you well, want to go on a I sweet date on the weekend and you get all, all wet? I don't own the house. Like, if it gets damaged, it's not my problem. Yeah, good point, if yeah. you're renting. But, Chang, it is a thing, right? It's it a is, big it storm is quite coming. a massive thing. Uh, it'll start slowly. The weather will come through tomorrow, and then the hardest bit would be hitting on Saturday. Yeah. The hardest bit, that's a technical term. <laughs> yeah. So, Civil Defence has says, get survival kits ready. I'm not going to do survival that. Survival kits? Yeah, survival kits, because there might be power is outages. Is it going to be that bad? Yeah, the power outages, the uh, roof might be taking off houses and stuff. My plan is that if we have a... Maybe this is terrible, but my plan if we have a Civil Defence emergency is just um, rob the grocery store. <laughs> There's one just down the road from mine. Chen, you're rolling guys. your eyes. Is that a bad idea? What do you think, guy? No, well, why not? You Isn't that what we're going to stay alive? <laughs> you guys are being really yeah. irresponsible right this now. This is a serious thing. You're on thing. the radio. Yeah. There are a lot of people listening to you. You shouldn't be... When there is a severe weather warning... Do you have a civil defence kit, Mrs. Smarty Pants? Yes. Do you? Because I am a grown-up. No, you don't. I have water, I, I, canned food. I've got do you four, actually? I've got four two-litre bottles of... Oh, no, one-litre bottles of water, and I've got canned food and dry food. I've got batteries, okay. and I've got a solar charger for my phone. Mm-hmm. Have you got any dog food? I always have extra dog food. Good, okay. Always. I'm, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to put together survival kits. You've got to be aware of these things. Yeah, good point. You yeah, should. So, so actually, you have to be prepared. Because even in the, today's New Zealand paper says, stay indoors. Lucy okay. is on the way. It's going to oh, be that go. bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. You think it's a joke, like, but um, I would stay tuned to y- your local station. I live in a oh. high-rise building. It doesn't matter. I'm it's doomed. Do what you say? Well, stay stay, stay yeah. tuned to the radio. So, yeah, stay tuned to the oh, radio. This is, a to the edge. this is a rating bonanza for us. <laughs> We're yeah, trying we'll, to get listeners. Listen yeah. to the edge if you, for all your cyclone news. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good This has been a, a, a shameless plug I'm going to go get a safety kit guys I need this Get Chang, some band-aids just, I, I don't know where it's coming But <laughs> I've got a weekend away Plan to go to um, Tauranga you good, good idea, bad idea Bad idea Ooh, Real <laughs> bad idea, bro Just drive safely yeah, and, drive. Every, and remember I know it's a, a thing Especially in Auckland But it happens all around the country As soon as it starts raining People forget how to drive Yeah Just slow down and take your time Drive to the conditions Womad is this weekend Oh no Womad 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 <laughs> Whatever <laughs> Oh no, Womad <laughs> <laughs> It's pronounced Womad Be like careful have- and don't listen to those diddles Guy, Sharon and Clint On the edge Things that turn you off. That is what's t- trending on Twitter right now, all around the world and right here in New Zealand. So we want to know what it is for you. Thank you to the person that texted and said when Clint says coming up straight after this and then plays two more songs and, <laughs> and when Sharon sings terribly on air. <laughs> Sorry about that. 
That was Chang who texted that in. Charlotte, <laughs> what turns you off? Bad tea. Oh. That is a really common one. I can't deal with people that, honestly, anybody that knows me, tea. I can't deal with, like, the big gap. You know, the buck the, in the front of the tooth? Yeah. I can't deal with gap. Funny yeah. one, because no, no, no. it's a funny one, because some people really like that. Some people like the gap, some people like crooked teeth as well. So, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, it's a good one. Tracy, what turns you off? Really, guys wearing really, really skinny jeans. Like, no one wants to see this. Little <laughs> it does show off the chicken leg in a boy, doesn't it, Tracy? Yeah, it does, and it's fully gross. Like, you want them to have muscle, you don't want bones. What's your stance on low riding? Because my husband low rides sometimes, it drives me insane. That's a massive turn off for me. What is about it for you? It um, depends how low low riding is. Clint, I'm looking at you under the bum. This is a slide dig to get you to pull your pants off. Oh, I reckon I'm nailing it. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tracy. What would it be for you guys? What's a turn off for you? Um, this is a very good question. I, for me, it's people um, bragging about themselves all the time. Oh, you would really not like yourself. <laughs> um, that's that's the biggest one. And people always talking about themselves, like they're the most interesting person oh, in the yeah. world. I'm very easy, so not you, a lot. You'll have Thank something. You. Think harder. I want you'll everyone to something. think harder. I, I don't particularly like it. Um, people, girls who swear too much. Oh God, I've got no, I've got no luck with you. Great ones from Twitter. Um, a girl said, "When guys ask for pictures, that is a classic one. Oh, that is yes. so annoying. That is such a turn off. Like on text, like send me a picture of yourself. Yes. Oh yeah. So okay. bad. Um, insecurity. I think okay. I think insecurity can be a charming t- trait, but too much of it. If you're too insecure about everything, yeah. We got Rebecca on 0800 the Edge. What's a turn off for you, Rebecca? People who feel the need to interrupt me, and people who also make um, loud noises during quiet. When sorry, I'm going to interrupt you there, mate. It was too boring. <laughs> Rebecca, sh- I'm not sorry, guys. <laughs> shut up. I was waiting patiently to make sure I didn't interrupt Rebecca. <laughs> So basically Sorry, what you're Rebecca. saying, Rebecca, is that guy would definitely not be your kind of guy. The hashtag yeah. is uh, <laughs> things that turn me off, 0800 The Edge. And we got Hayden. We'll take one from the boys. What's yours? Smoking. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's so gross. Needs to be said. I have ended a relationship because of it, and I'm not regretting it one little bit. Did she take up smoking while you were with her, or did you get with her while she was a smoker, and then you're like, actually, I'm not into that. Can you please quit? And she wouldn't. I had told her that I hated people that smoke. Yeah. Um, she told me that she didn't, and <laughs> hid it from me, and so I found out, and I was like, well, see ya. <laughs> you didn't even give her the chance to quit, Hayden. Well... <sighs> At that, what point do you just go, you know, I'm just not even, yeah. He was too, nah. he was too busy being betrayed. So the answer was no. <laughs> All right, Hayden. Thanks for you call, mate. 0800 The Edge, text to 3343, or you can use the hashtag as well. Um, hashtag things that turn me off. Chuck the hashtag GSC show on the end, and we'll do some more straight after this. Okay, well, not straight after. We're actually going to play two songs. Well, just say two songs because you're turning someone off. <laughs> We've got Patrick on the line. What is it for you, Patrick? Oh, what really grinds my gears? Is when girls say bro, cuz, and G. Oh, okay. I can understand the cuz and the G thing, but bro just seems so natural sometimes. Yeah, but not for girls. It's, you know, you see your mate, a suit to do, it's all right. What should we call you then? Babe. <laughs> see, and then I call. See, that's my thing is that I call people babe all the time, and then everyone texts in telling me to stop calling people babe. No, not everyone. One person texts in, and I think it's awesome how you say babe. babe. Or, or even pet the love muscle. Pat, Pat, Pat the love the muscle. Love. Hey, hey, Pat. Is the... that what I'm calling you now, Pat the love muscle? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Pat the love muscle. What if someone's saying that's tapu, bro? <laughs> that's tapu. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pat the love muscle. Thanks for the call, babe. No, not a problem, babe. Love you, babe. <laughs> love. <laughs> Mo, what's the turn off for you? Is it someone um, calling themselves Pat the love muscle? <laughs> <laughs> no, back here and people that think they're better than others. Yes, uh, arrogant. Turn out to be dirty dogs themselves. I'm hearing your girlfriend and back and back here. Just my, for good taste. My yeah, back here is just hideous. <laughs> my, my, for me, for me, people who think they're better than others is a really big one. And I, my theory is that everyone's a loser. I just think if, if, if we all disagree that we're all losers, that's okay. okay. Yeah. I think there's two types of people in the world. There's losers and there's douchebags. And douchebags are just people who don't realise that they're losers. 
Ah. It's my theorem. It's the great leveller. Quite a negative way of looking at it, I guess, but that's my perspective on the world. Okay. Thanks to you, cool, Mo. Still taking some more calls on 0800 The Edge and your texts as well? Um, tramp stamps. This is a big one. Oh, yeah, especially if they're a Playboy bunny. I feel sorry for people who um, got tramp stamps, didn't realise that was that was what they are called, and people are like, nice tramp stamp. You're like, no! Or if you got a tramp stamp before it became a tramp stamp, yeah. <laughs> before everyone was getting them, where um, everyone was like, lower back, it's an interesting place to get a tattoo. Yeah, then people see it when you bend over and your top rides up. Uh, oh, is that why they... <laughs> oh. I thought it was why. I don't know. That's what I thought it was, because then, yeah... They're just, they're just, uh, they're just uh, something that has a bit of a reputation. That's the way it's that goes. Just to keep things going straight. Where, just, just on that because it, it's a very sexist thing to say. Oh, that's a tramp stamp. Where's the male tramp stamp? In think? the same place. It's called a tramp stamp on a boy as well. Is there not, there's not a tattoo. Where you're like, ah, oh, you've got the man tramp stamp. Yeah. I don't find, um, no, I, I thought that a male tramp stamp was just in the same place. Yeah. I don't like. I love tattoos on boys. Yeah. I love them, especially sleeves. Just. Oh, let, let me look at them all day. But I don't <laughs> like uh, guys that have tattoos like below their belt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. So like, like tattoos on their like crutch or around, yeah, or peeking their, out, or their hip or anything like that. Like, so gross. Belt yeah. up. Massive turn off. Let me see it. And we've got someone else on the phone. Sorry, I got distracted. Karen, what's a turn off for you? Guys who always ask for sex. Ask for it. <laughs> Yeah, like, well, pretty like hints it all the time and ask for it all the time. If I want, it, I'll ask for it. Karen, can I please have some sex? That sort of thing. Yeah, that sort of Where thing. Where are these so guys? Like hinting at it all the time. Are these are these boyfriends who are asking for it or just people on the streets? <laughs> oh, you know those those. Those friends that you have. Oh yeah. Okay, all right. Friends with benefits. Thanks for your yeah. freaky bitch, Karen. Thank you so much, you cool babe. Um, That's a, all right. A couple of other good ones. Um, girls that wear too much makeup. Boys that wear makeup full stop. <laughs> um, unemployed guys. It really annoys me when people fart in public and then laugh like it's supposed to be funny. Um, and it turns me off when people use your and your incorrectly. Oh, I can see that. Yeah, bad grammar. Unfortunately, um, the person who's texted in has spelled incorrectly incorrectly. So <laughs> it makes it a little bit of a turn off for me, to be Damn honest. It. Guy Sharon and Clint. On the edge. I uh, promised you news about free beer before if you live in Wellington. Um, this is an, an, an initiative brought about by Gareth Morgan. Always weird, um, coming from him. The, the guy, Isn't he the guy that wanted to get rid of all the cats? Yes, he wanted to um, ban cats, domestic cats. He's the um, son of... No, the, the dad of, of the guy who invented Trade Me. Yes. And when I say invented Trade Me, he saw eBay and then just copied that idea, Sam yes. Morgan. <laughs> yes. And Gareth Morgan, I remember, he gives financial advice. He's a very successful economist in his yes. own right. But I always think it's weird when he's giving financial advice because I'm always like, his main idea is just have a son who has a 200 billion dollars was he not rich before his son oh no he was well he was he was well known respected but he wasn't rich like he's he's i think the main way he made his money was investing he in has trade his money. own kiwi saver scheme like you can do kiwi saver by anyway yeah. getting off track his what you give your cat and he'll give you money yeah <laughs> <laughs> drown your cat and i'll fund your retirement Whoa. no that's not it um he is and but this idea is similar to be honest so his idea is to have a pest free wellington very passionate about wellington yeah. um he owns a phoenix does he own the Phoenix? Oh, he heads the group that owns the Phoenix. Yeah, yeah. he's a big shareholder. He um, has decided that they need to get rid of um, all the rats in Wellington because they're a pest and they, Good idea. they kill native birds. I wonder why there's some rats hanging around in Wellington. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's because you've tried to kill all the cats. <laughs> but don't the rats... Um, um, the cats just like, eat the rats. But isn't it just like a circle of life thing yeah. where you need the rats to like eat other pests? No, but I think the, I think the balance is out. Either way, we could debate the um, ecological impacts for days, and God, I would love to. But anyway, <laughs> um, he said he's setting up a bunch of traps, and he's asked students to man these hundred traps, and if you man a trap for him and you bring him dead rats to the university, they'll exchange you dead rats for beer. Oh. So that they, instead of paying you Yuck. cash, they'll give you vouchers for free beer. Do you want to drink a beer after you've just got just dropped off some bloody dead rats? Depends. Am I a student? Yeah, good point. Yeah, am, I very point. If, am I very poor and do I love beer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, good even point. If you're, if, even if I was a student, I would not sit on a rat trap all afternoon just Does, for a dozen. Doesn't matter if you wouldn't because people will. They take the rats to the university. Um, they freeze the rats and study them. But yeah, they're going to swap you for free beer. Interesting idea, right? Good way to motivate students with beer. So He's never going to get rid of all the rats, though. <laughs> like, so, so I've got an idea. What is this thing about getting rid of, rid of animals? First it was cats, now no, it's he's, rats. He's just trying to get rid of pests. Yeah. 
And uh, he thinks cats are a pest because they kill native birds, which is possibly a fair point, but he went about it in a really weird way. Yeah, yeah. But I just reckon just bring back the cats. The cats eat the rats, and the rats eat some... Hats. Hats. <laughs> Science. And the hats are on the mat. Science. The circle of Outside life. Outside all the flats. <laughs> Guy, Sharon, and Clint. On the urge. Shocking and slightly disgusting news today. Um, gonorrhea, which is an STD, has become resistant to most of the antibiotics that are used to combat it. So as a result, we are standing on the brink of gonorrhea, known as cephalosporin-resistant gonorrhea, that is not treatable by modern medicine. Incredible. Yuck. So this already exists in Japan, France, and Spain. Okay? Yeah. So penicillin and the tetracyclines, which are used to um, cure it normally in most pre- prevalent, uh, prevalent strains, yeah. um, are no longer combating these new weird types of gonorrhea which are spreading around the world. This so is a terrifying what, thought. So what you're saying is that if you get it, you've got it. Symptoms. You can't get rid of it. Basically, symptoms are like swelling of the testes. Ooh. Ooh. Bum itching. I don't want to. I'm trying to say this as cleanly as possible, but they're sounding way worse. I feel Does anal it? itching is the term. Um, <laughs> it's not something you want to leave untreated. Obviously, the um, United States Center for Disease Control thinks that emerging resistant strains will one day take the last remaining first line treatment options away. Mm. Um, this is terrifying news, guys. This has always been the the risk with antibiotics that we'll use them too much and that yeah. the bugs will become resistant to it. My theory is that I try not to take antibiotics if I can avoid it. That's the right thing to do. But I feel like that's stupid, though, because everyone else is taking antibiotics, so the strands are, are happening anyway. No, it's, it needs to be a group effort. We need, to, we need to band together to fight gonorrhea. The world is ending, guys, <laughs> and we're all going to die from gonorrhea. Can we organise Can we organise a charity concert? To, to a fundraiser for gonorrhea? Gonorrhea, let us go. Be <laughs> it bump. And it was it for the chance for me. Shazog, oh, yes, you can't. start this song. Don't pretend you're not part of it. Sorry if that was gross, guys. Of lightning going up your penis. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was a public service announcement, and sorry if it was gross. Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the edge. There you go. There's the podcast. Thank you for listening. We uh, wanted to get Chang to rate today's show, just as a little bit of an experiment to see what he thought. Chang, was it a good show? Yeah, I thought it was good. What was your favourite bit? Ah, uh, the tiny temper bit was really good. The tiny temper yeah. bit. Well, I feel like you were prepared. you didn't have a while to wait before you said this. You're well prepared. What was the favourite bit about the t- tiny temper interview, Chang? Just him coming from the toilet straight to the interview. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> that was bloody funny. Did he even wash his hands? No, that's Someone right. should have asked him that question. No, he, he, did, he did wash his hands. How do you know? Did he, did he go to the girl's toilet? No, because when he was walking out, he was wiping his hands on his pants. Couldn't have been wiping wheeze off his hands. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, well, he's tiny temper. He wouldn't be the first one to walk in here with dirty hands. <laughs> Dominic Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> Take that out of context. Yeah. Yeah. That could be trouble. Yeah. Chang, what's your rating system? How are we going to rate the show? Um, well, well, just like fantasy super rugby. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, currently sitting third on the table, like the Blues team. Well, uh, okay. What are you yeah. talking about? You're sitting third on the table on the New Zealand conference. We are. Yeah. So you're, you're what is you sitting with fantasy? You've confused me so much. No, he's saying that we're the Blues. Yeah, we're the Blues. Today's oh, show was the Blues. I don't want to be a Blue. That is Why a, not? That's my favourite team. I want to be a Crusader. So oh, Crusader is even worse, I think. Even worse, yeah. yeah. Oh. So we're not the... <laughs> not, today's show wasn't the best. Not the Chiefs. But it wasn't the worst. It wasn't the worst. So we're right not in the, the middle. You gave no, us a five out of ten. You sat on the fence. This yep. is why I knew this would be a bad idea. Oh, Thank good. you for at least, nothing. At least it doesn't sound like we've got our big fishing rods out looking for a wee... <laughs> That's on the head at the end of the day. That's what I was doing. Hey, thank you so much hey for listening guy, to the podcast. Hey, you're real good today, babe. So, thank you. so good. Thank you for uh, Chang for reviewing the show in such an excellent way. I'm and hungry for a compliment. Thank you for you guys. Clint, um, thank you for not calling me mate in the last 20 minutes. I really appreciate We're it. We're going to talk about and this on tomorrow's show, I reckon. you did a really good job of the desk today. Yay. And Cheers Shady for listening, Dom, guys. You did a great job. You get us our <laughs> Vegas sandwiches. Vegas sandwiches. Vegas sandwiches. The Guy Shannon and Clint Podcast.